Hey guys, today we'll be covering a 2012 psychological drama film called Helter Skelter. The opening scene features a young woman named Lilico who is revealing herself after undergoing plastic surgery. She appears to have had surgery on almost every part of her body, transforming her into a stunning model. Meanwhile, we are introduced to a detective named Mr. Asada and his assistant who are discussing Lilico. His assistant claims that all of the high school girls want Lilico's face, but the guy believes that her skin tone and muscle movements don't match the bone structure. According to the guy, Lilico appears beautiful on the outside, but like a fruit, the bugs have eaten it from within. In the next scene, Lilico is in a press conference where news reporters ask her how she's feeling. It turns out that she's going to make her debut in the film industry. Later, Lilico is seen in her dressing room with her two assistants, Michiko and Kinchon. Lilico is obsessed with perfection, causing her to constantly speak rudely to her assistants. A little while later, Lilico's wealthy boyfriend, Nanbu, shows up and the two kiss. Seeing this, Michiko and Kinchon leave the room out of awkwardness. The same night, Lilico also sleeps with the producer in hopes that he will persuade the director to cast her in more films. Following this, Lilico returns back home and stands in front of the mirror. She notices a big scar on her forehead, causing her to scream in disappointment. The next day, Kinchan talks to Michiko, who reveals that Lilico's scar is the result of plastic surgery. She also informs him that most of Lilico's body is fake, which surprises him. She then hands him a ruby ring which her late husband had given her and tells him to take care of it. Now that Kinchan knows the secret, Michiko asks him to be with Lilico. On the other hand, Lilico goes to the beauty clinic to redo the plastic surgery surgery and have her scar fixed. However, upon reaching there, she discovers other patients with similar scars who are yelling at the doctor to fix it. This makes Lilico nervous, but she nonetheless decides to go ahead with it. Elsewhere, Mr. Asada and his co-worker are looking at the photograph of a dead girl named Megumi. Mr. Asada claims that Megumi's ex-husband, who is a doctor at the same beauty clinic, is illegally obtaining organs, skin, bone and muscle for cosmetic surgery and transplanting them. Furthermore, he says that the patients will require suppressant drugs for the rest of their lives, and if they cannot afford them, they will suffer severe side effects. The co-worker wonders why women do such things, to which Mr. Asada responds that women are vain. In the next scene, Lilico, who has been featured in numerous photo shoots, TV dramas, shows, and advertisements, is gaining in popularity and notoriety. Every magazine with her on the cover appears to be in high demand. She also gets offers from Hollywood. Eventually, she becomes everyone's it girl. One night as the two are driving back home, Lilico asks Machiko why she doesn't wear makeup. Machiko responds that it makes no difference because she has already aged. Upon arriving home, Lilico sits in front of a mirror while Machiko begins arranging her belongings. Lilico wishes she had someone who truly loved her. Hearing this, Machiko tells her that millions of people adore her. Just then, Lilico wipes her makeup and finds another scar on her face. She also notices that the scar on her forehead has grown larger, which causes her to sob. As a result, she claims that if she loses her looks, she will lose her popularity and everyone will laugh at her and forget about her. After this, she walks out of the room and asks Machiko if she is truly beautiful. When the latter says yes, Lilico moves closer to Machiko and kisses her asking her to satisfy her. One day, Lilico receives a letter from her sister Chikako, who mentions that she is in the same city for a school trip and would like to see her. The next day, Lilico meets Chikako and they are happy to see each other after such a long time apart. Chikako praises her work on a drama, but Lilico shares that she's considering quitting because she believes that singing and talk shows are not her cup of tea. Lilico then advises her sister to lose weight and work on her appearance. She also offers to cover all of the expenses, but Chikako believes that she isn't as courageous as her sister. Hearing this, Lilico tries to persuade her that beauty makes one courageous. Elsewhere, Mr. Asada and his assistant are watching an interview with Lilico. He claims that Lilico beats her wings the way others want, even if it means losing her own feathers. He thinks now is the time to approach her. Meanwhile, Lilico asks her mother Kirei if she is sending money to her sister, to which the latter says yes. However, Kirei explains that she is unable to send as much money as Lilico anticipated due to her high maintenance costs. It turns out that Kirei hires young models and leads them to various TV ads and photo shoots. A few moments later, she introduces her daughter to a girl named Kazue, who appears to be well liked by everyone. The following day, Lilico and Kazue begin working together but Lilico appears to be jealous of her. Eventually, Kazooie slowly starts to take Lilico's place as people start embracing a new face. 
She also gets numerous jobs, causing Lilico to be depressed. As a result, she begins taking a variety of medications to help her relax. In the midst of all of this, she receives a call from Nanbu, who informs her that he will be marrying the daughter of a politician. He asserts that a rich guy like him cannot marry a commoner like Lilico. This further sends her into a spiral of hopelessness and depression. One night, Lilico heads to Michiko's place and comes across her boyfriend, Shin. Lilico is immediately infatuated with his half-naked body, so she asks permission to kiss him. Shin appears to have a crush on Lilico, so he readily agrees. Michiko watches all of this, but she doesn't say anything, fearing that Lilico will fire her. She also watches as her boyfriend gets intimate with another woman. The following day, Lilico summons Michiko and Shin to her place and assigns them a job. As per the job, the couple drives to a location and throws acid on Nanbu's future wife, destroying her face and killing her. Following this, Liliko asks Michiko and Shin to make love in front of her. The next day, Kinchan is doing Liliko's hair when he notices the scars on her back. However, he doesn't say anything. Instead, he goes to Kirei and explains that Liliko's skin looks old because it lacks elasticity and doesn't bounce back. Hearing this, the shocked Kirei believes that this might be the end for Liliko. The same night, Liliko meets Nanbu in a hotel. She inquires about his future wife, but Nanbu tells her to forget about her because he only loves Liliko. He also reveals that he didn't want to get involved in politics, but he wanted to be a sailor, a musician, and an entomologist. After listening to him, Liliko says that he should have at least given it a shot instead of giving up and feeling sorry for himself. In the next scene, Mr. Asada approaches Liliko and addresses her as Tiger Lily. He then asks her to testify in court because the beauty clinic Liliko visits is illegal. According to Mr. Asada, the beauty clinic takes advantage of women's obsession with beauty. As the conversation goes on, it is clear that he knows everything about Liliko's secrets and desires. For instance, he is aware that she's the mastermind behind the acid attack. When Liliko tries to deny it, he reveals that he has a witness, as well as the plate number and location of her van during the crime. Before departing, he hands her the file containing the evidence against the beauty clinic, as well as Liliko's secret. Later, when Liliko returns home, she goes through the evidence and discovers the past pictures of herself when she used to be fat and ugly. This worries her, and as a result, she injects herself with a drug in order to calm herself down. The next morning, Liliko awakens to find Machiko preparing breakfast for her. Shortly after, she turns on the television and sees Kazooie featured in the same advertisement that she used to be the face of. This enrages her, so she asks Michiko to destroy Kazooie's face. Later, Liliko heads to the television show, and before the shoot, she goes to the bathroom to inject a drug. Unfortunately, during the shoot, the drug starts affecting her mental capacities. Elsewhere, Michiko goes to the amusement park and approaches Kazooie with a knife. Surprisingly, Kazooie doesn't try to stop her or run. She believes that one day all models will be forgotten because they are simply machines that process people's desires. Still, they keep adapting with new names and new faces. The words hit Michiko hard, and she becomes emotional and decides to abort the plan. The next day, Liliko wakes up with a severe headache that causes her to vomit. Realizing that Michiko failed to perform her task, Liliko slaps her. Liliko screams that Kazooie will take her place and that she will soon be forgotten. Following the outburst, she storms into the rain and sits on a street. She tries to calm herself with pills, but they are ineffective. Right then, she starts reminiscing about her former glory days and becomes deeply disturbed. Back inside the house, Michiko finds the evidence file which contains all of Liliko and the beauty clinic secrets, so she places it in the post box. Eventually, the evidence goes viral and people begin to slander and troll Liliko. Several news reporters arrive at her place to inquire about the full body plastic surgery and the illegal beauty clinic that she had been visiting. At this point, Liliko's depression, as well as the scars on her body, have started increasing. Meanwhile, Mr. Asada is accused of leaking crucial information about the beauty clinic and Liliko, causing him to get suspended. A few days later, Kirei visits her daughter and tells her about her lawyer, who has written a script for Liliko. She then instructs her to memorize every word of it and not to say anything else. Following this, Kinchan walks in and assists Liliko in concealing her scars with makeup. Later, Liliko arrives into an empty hall that once used to be packed with her fans. Then, Mr. Asada arrives and asks her if she's ready for the court proceedings. She responds positively, saying she will pull this off. As the two continue talking, the detective advises her not to harm her feathers anymore because if she does, her services will be rendered ineffective. However, Liliko soon realizes that no one loves or needs her, so she considers destroying herself. Later at the press conference, she stabs herself in the eye putting an end to her messed up life. Despite this, 
her postures in magazines continue to be popular. In the following scene, Mr. Asada and his assistant are walking across the street when a girl approaches them. She hands him a card with her address on it and invites him to pay her a visit if he desires. As they depart, Mr. Asada's assistant inquires about the girl, to which he reveals that she is none other than Chikako, who appears to have had plastic surgery just like her sister, Liliko. Furthermore, he informs her that the situation is far from over as 156 patients have filed a lawsuit against the beauty clinic and nine people have taken their own lives. Mr. Asada claims that there are still more tiger lilies around. His assistant wonders why God bestows youth and beauty on people only to take them away. Mr. Asada clarifies that beauty and youth are not the same thing because youth is beautiful, but beauty isn't youth. Elsewhere, Kazooie is doing her photo shoot, and now Kinchan works as her makeup artist. After work, Kazooie and her colleagues go to a bar to unwind. There, she notices Machiko heading to the basement and follows her. There, she discovers a beauty room with a girl sitting in front of a mirror. Soon after, the girl turns around, revealing herself to be Liliko, who smiles as she looks at Kazooie.